And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Thursday, August 26th, 2021. I'm going to start here on the four-hour chart because tomorrow is a major wait day. We've been waiting out all week for the results of this meeting, which is having a lot of bankers and a lot of people at Jackson Hole whooping it up, having a good time, I hope. And tomorrow we should be hearing from uh, Chairman Jerome Powell from the Fed to let us in on what was accomplished or what was decided within that meeting. So we're right on the precipice of reaching a, a major top or beginning a major slide or possibly even both. So let's kind of take a look at where I have things right now. I am going to continue to leave this as the top that finished those larger sequences and that goes all the way up to a cycle level. And what has happened since, we got an ABC down, that's wave A, a minor A. And then we got an ABC and what I believe is we're in the C wave now up, which has formed an irregular B wave. And irregular being that that B wave shot up on and surpassed the high of the previous, the fifth waves. That actually is not uncommon, particularly in a wave that finished the way that these did. We had some major corrective, a complex corrections, and then we had a triple, a double third wave that, that uh, subdivided twice. Of course, it broke in its own three, then it subdivided the three of three, and it was very powerful. And then a four and a five, and that concluded. The sell-off actually did give me some confirmation that those were the highs, but complex finishes here and here does often produce this type of rally, and it's based on what took place here. They pushed, they fought, they pushed, they fought, they got it to new highs, they pushed, they fought, they pushed and fought, and they got it to new highs. In fact, they got it to new highs more than once. But now that we're into that decision time, what we saw today was a little bit of, of adjusting of positions. And a lot of that came on the news that there was that uh, a double bombing at the Kabul airport in Afghanistan. And then further notice came out that 12 American servicemen have lost their lives. And of course, it's a very extremely unfortunate thing to happen right now. But the market initially sold on that news and you can't blame them. But in any case, the market was bought back up. So I would just go, but let me just finish with this chart then we'll go into this four. So if I'm counting this right, we have an A, and a B of a larger B wave. Okay, so it's gonna be a minor B wave. And <clears throat> so these are the minute waves, minute A, B, and one within minute C, and minute C is breaking into its own five, which is the rule. And then for within that, I can count one, two, three. So this has always been the fourth wave. Now, let me just open this up so I can please put some, um, additional parameters around this. Yep, that's the one I want. The, uh, one more time. There we go, now I got it. So I can put just what this wave four should look like so that we all know, let me just move this one more time over the 98. Okay, so, um, with the three being there, and if it measures out correctly, we have come down to that 50% level. And that's not uncommon, okay? And so we actually can still drift down to the 4457 area. And 618 is right below that at 4454. So, and the no break zone, or the no break line is at 4439. So we need to kind of keep those levels in our head because what, if we're completing a fourth wave here, and this kind of looked like it wanted to make a new loan, it just basically equaled it, which is quite acceptable. And in fact, it could have completed that move 
and it just double bottomed. But we still need to, and again, it could happen overnight in the Globex session, but we need to allow for 44.62 and possibly down to 44.54 to complete this fourth wave. Now, what we also have is that what comes next to finish this C wave, which finishes a B wave, so this type of move fits so completely that for whatever reason, the market gets bought up and it does it in a hurry. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back out to that <clears throat> four hour chart so I can start to reconstruct. Okay, so let's just go on the basis that the wave four completes and we rally. So we have copied all those down. I'm going to take that off again so that we can see the chart. This is for, we're now gonna expect a pretty, pretty quick rush up in a wave five. And we now know what can produce that. And now we're within 24 hours of getting that news. So this wave four position adjustment, people getting out going like, I'm okay. I'm getting out of, of whatever underlying stock. I'll get out here. Those are nice highs. I'm good. So people are making those types of decisions and <clears throat> based on what could and could not happen tomorrow. Now, if it's a three and this is a four, we're expecting a quick five. Where can that five go? Well, I can then put in, I'm going to go back down to an hour. The first marker we can put in is wave C to wave A here. So I'm going to put those up first. And then we can go Sorry about that. Let me undo those and let me change this. Yeah. And so I'm going to measure the relationships between an A wave and a C wave. Most have been already exceeded, so let's make it up to pretty high. But you can see we still do have some numbers. The 200% number, 4507. That's been a key, key level. And then 4533, second key, key level, because we're going to be adding some additional Fibonacci that would possibly then tell us where all of this should end. So I, since this is a minor, that would be the first one, and that takes care of this A wave. And we had some additional that I need to go out on. Let me go back out to the other chart. No, I'm going to leave them right there for right now. <clears throat> as far as our Fibonacci's go. Um, because what we have, and then we had some additional should, we can put in for the fifth wave, that was the last one. That's the second one. Excuse me. Well, I actually take this down to the 30 minutes so I can get in there and do it. Sorry for the delay, but it's been a wild day. All right, so again, from this second wave, I'm going to put in thank you. back up to that third wave, which is at 28, and then down. <clears throat> and let's, I'm going to call it from where it is right now. Okay. So based on 44.65. Now, this would be where the submarine wave five would be in relationship with that third wave. And those are all the way on the inside here, as close as you can get. And I can do one additional thing. Um, well, we're going to leave those on. It's going to look a little crowded, but stay with me. So what we have is for wave five, we've got this one doesn't really count, but it does start it. 4,500, 4,507 to 4,509. 45, let's say 15 to 4521, and then 4533 to 4535. 
So that's actually a really good zone, and that would fit. If they really are, if they come out of that meeting tomorrow and impress the world with what they're saying, yes, this every algorithm was going to hit buy, and this thing could go, it will fly. That I am looking for. I think whatever happens, we've got a whole lot of coiled up energy both on both sides. So again, we're confronting that situation. If it comes out without any release, it's going to be very puzzling. I think people would just be like, you'd be looking at each other like, okay, what are we supposed to do? Um, so we'll have to wait for somebody to come in, but I just don't see it. I think there's been a lot of mindset, algorithm set to react. Um, being able to trade it is going to be the challenge, but more on that. So if we get that and we get this move up into these zones, then we are reaching the end of this ABC, and that would be a minor B wave and we're gonna now get a minor C wave down. So wherever this ends up, you can quickly run a Fibonacci from here to here, an extension. And that's gonna give you the downside. And the relationship's gonna be wave, again, wave A to wave C. And being that wave B was an irregular, the most common retracement back down will be 1.618 times the length of wave A and that calculation, you'll be given that calculation. So I'd be looking for something pretty steep and pretty quick, the same force that took it up. Unless this news just truly pushes this market beyond expectations and starts taking it up into these upper extensions, which again are the wave five. So that's how we did this. I continue to just use extensions within Fibonacci. And we're now measuring a sub-minute wave five or a minute, yeah, sub-minute wave five to complete the minute C. Its relationship is to this third wave. And now if I pull it back open, you can see it. So the third wave is yay long. Then we got the B and that's saying that the B ends there. If it ends down here, then this all has to be we figure, and it will make a difference. But based on that, here are the levels. And we got seven to nine, 45, 20, 40, 45, 33 to 35, and then it breaks. And then we got 52, then we have 62, it goes like 10. This is gonna be like 75 or 79, 85, and then 4606. And that's only where, you know, wave five will be 200 times or 200% the length of wave three. And you can understand that there is no problem because wave one would be the shortest wave. So there's tons of room and it all fits in Elliott. And it's truly, if it truly, again, is producing that top, which is gonna like put the cap on everything, then it's still a major top, whether I consider this level the high for the sequences, or this is still gonna be the top of the market. And so it, it's a blow off. It's a blow off finish if it, if it happens, if it happens. Now, the other side of that coin after that big buildup, I'm sorry to say, the other side of the coin is that whatever they say disappoints. Now, there really can't be a problem to change this three to here, put the four in, and this is the five, and this is the five. And we're just now building to the downside. So if we come in tomorrow, we get that news. And again, the market opens before the press conference. So we could still get this and then that. Okay? So these are the scenarios. And we got to keep this in mind. We still, before this meeting, press conference, there may be leaks. There may be all kinds of pundancy. The, the airwaves will be full. But... If we get a quick run up, again, we're, if we're into new high territory and we're into those resistance zones, a turn and a sudden jar and a sudden shock is going to give you the same response. It's going to fly lower. Those levels will be rejected. Again, the coils are wound in both directions. The buyers are just raring to step in. And they might go in on whatever they think or perceive or, or whatever the machine thinks and perceives as bullish versus the sellers who 
sit on the edge of their seats waiting. So it really should be kind of like that. I, again, I don't mean to be dramatic, but I just think that when we see the move, you're gonna, it could be like, oh my God, wow, because it'll, it'll paint so fast. And I believe that in both directions. So trading wise, be very, very careful. If, if you are willing to step in because your, your technical indicators and your systems or whatever you use, I use moving averages, if they are suggesting get out of the way because we're going in one direction, you just get in. And if we have that type of a day, that is going to be a one way to trade. And that can be extremely profitable. But you're going to have to sit through in between the volatility that will be going in both directions. So a lot of it's going to be based on the waves of the buyers that kind of move in. They'll move in in waves. Now, one huge buy order, the next huge buy order. And you'll see that. But in between, there are a lot of people that are going to want to take profit. And then maybe it starts to slide down a little bit. Lack of buyers because they're not pushing. It just falls naturally the prices will just come down. So again, we need to be very careful. Um, but enough trade talk. For tomorrow, all is gonna be based on that meeting, but we have both sides. We might get in Globex a little bit of drift down, maybe down to here. But if this intent is to put in a fifth wave, then that's, what it's going to do, and it's going to be fast. Very similar to this and this, but magnified. Because we have all that energy, that energy, that energy, and that energy, and now this energy all packed into waiting. What do we do? So either all this buy energy gets expelled again, or all of this buy energy turns to sell energy along with the sell energy, and it just goes. Both are 50-50, so it depends on tomorrow. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna wish everybody a really good trading day tomorrow. Uh, do bear in mind your risk parameters. If you're able to expand them, please respect your limits. The market, if it moves, and it moves with great speed in both directions, will provide numerous opportunities. I don't think we just go and then sit. I think there's too much adjustment that needs to take place, even if it's a Friday, if it is tomorrow and it's a weekly expiration. I still believe that eventually, you know, what the news is and everything that's been held back, we should have a high volume day tomorrow. So leaving it there, good luck. Next up, it will be on Sunday.